And we're back, and I have our next guest with us. I have Ollie Pecolane of the band Amorphous. Welcome to the show, Ollie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Amorphous has been around for over 30 years, 14 full-length albums, and just continues to create one great album after the next. And today we're here to talk about their latest album, Halo, yet another great album from the band. So, Ali, once again, the band has Pekka as your lyricist. So tell us a little bit about the lyrical journey he takes us on with this album. Well, I, I know that there is some kind of loose theme on the album. It's um, telling about um, when Finnish folk started to gather to Finland after the Ice Age. <laughs> so, uh, but but still, um, it it was supposed to be a theme album uh, in all, but uh, but it seemed to be a little bit too hard to um, make the the solid storyline of the album because. Uh, uh, when we compose the songs, it's impossible to uh, put the lyrics to a certain order on the album. So uh, we kind of skipped that plan after all. But um, but uh, in the end of the day, I think uh, the lyrics are, even though they are based on um, uh, like ancient Finnish poems mm -hmm. and uh, that sort of uh, rhetoric, <laughs> uh, uh, they, they are pretty much uh, um, stories about Pekka's personal life, and uh, and um, it's like I, I know that he hopes that uh, they wouldn't be speculated too much because um, it's really important that people can rely, relate the lyrics to themselves mm -hmm. as well. So uh, every everybody can make their own interpretations about the lyrics and uh, read them as they want it would be like um, uh, it would ruin something if you would mm. explain everything about mm -hmm. it so uh, it's better to keep it like a um, little bit <laughs> in the dark in 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 in, in some in some way so uh, yeah yeah so but but i think the um, the, the lyric lyrics themselves follow pretty much the same themes that they've been doing like the recent 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us also then about the musical content of this album, if there were any challenges in writing and recording with all this stuff that's going on in the world. Yeah, well it was pretty much the same um, way we did the album than the previous one. Uh, with Queen of Time we uh, maybe had two days <laughs> in between before we uh, jumped to the studio uh, after the tour. But this time we had a little bit more time uh, uh, to uh, um, prepare ourselves to the studio session uh, because of the COVID situation. Uh, I think uh, we made the last tour on January 2020 and, um, and then we uh, we were aimed to uh, tour for our uh, 30th anniversary nice. for several gigs in Finland, but uh, but it didn't happen. So we had to, like uh, had to sit on our hands for quite a time. Uh, but still, um, I think we started to re rehearse the songs um, uh, maybe maybe um, on uh, December of 2020 and. Uh, but it was kind of quick process anyway, like like on the previous time as well. We rehearsed maybe uh, three weeks and um, sent the demos back and forth with Jens. And then we started to record. So uh, it was quite a straightforward thing. And uh, uh, we just did the basic tracks first, like uh, drums and basses. Uh, on February uh, last year, and uh, I think uh, I heard the songs on September. So uh, we just played and uh, <laughs> uh, heard the result afterwards. So it was kind of a freaky thing to do, you know. Uh, just play play basic stuff and hear this, the um, the album with the 
with the vocals uh, afterwards. So uh, we have a lot, lot, lots to work on with, with the uh, with the arrangement still before we hit hit the stage uh, in New York oh, boy. <laughs> on April. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, no, did did I read somewhere in this whole bio that you guys had like thirty songs written and you just had your producer pick thirteen? Yeah, I think we have twenty seven songs. Oh my gosh. Songs and uh, yeah, and uh, Jens listened to all of them. Them and uh, well, I think Jens is pretty good in uh, um, song song selections and mm-hmm. uh, well, deciding the whole of the album. So. Uh, I think it's a kind of a solid, solid hole. Oh yes, he he made. So uh, there are songs from Esa, songs from Santeri, and one song from uh, Tommy. Tommy Koivusari. Um, so um, yeah, it has good vi- variety and uh, good dynamics. And uh, yeah, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, he made. I think he made some good choices. And, and uh, yeah. you you released uh, the moon as your single and first video. So why did you guys choose that particular song as the single? And what is it sort of kind of about? Well, um, that's kind of catchy song, mm-hmm. and it's maybe one of the most commercial songs on the album. So that's may, might be the reason why why. <laughs> Uh, record label chose that particular mm-hmm. song, and uh, I think it's one one of the best Amorphis songs ever. So uh, it's not a bad choice anyway. Um, but the album it it doesn't uh, give um, a perfect picture of the album because uh, the album itself it's a little bit more. Uh, how should I say? It's it's kind of a stripped down and progressive, more guitar oriented mm-hmm. than the previous were, and. Um, uh, there are a lot, lots more, more crawling than, than clean vocals this time. Uh, it was also Jens' um, idea, and uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a catchy song, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we also it's see it. I have a wide range of uh, audience for for the uh, album and uh, for the music, so uh, yeah. Well, That's we, how it goes. <laughs> yeah, well, we enjoyed it, and we also see a shot a frosty little video for On the Dark Waters, which is actually one of my favorite songs off the album, and that we're looking forward to that, too. Do you have, like, a particular favorite song off this album, Molly? Well, it might be Northwards, mm-hmm. the opening track. That's that's one of my favorites, and uh, also The Moon is, is, is the other one. Uh... But it's still it's kind of hard to pick one song. Mm-hmm. It kind of um, the album opens little little by little. It's kind of hard. It's too near for me still uh, because um, the production cycle is too near, and uh, we've been playing those songs like hundred times. So it, it's kind of hard. It, it was with Queen of Time. I, it started to open for me uh, like within six months after starting the tour so uh hmm. it's uh I, I usually don't listen to the albums uh after right after the uh session the album session so uh, it's kind of hard to say but uh but so far i think nude Wars and uh, the moon are, the, are my favorite songs on the album so, so tell us a little bit about the cover art and the artist ali yeah it's um the same artist which did uh, Under the Red Cloud and uh, Queen of Time, Val Noir from uh, France. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, he's, um, I, I don't know, he's working with the computer and uh, it was kind of a lengthy uh, process this time with him because um, uh, there was only a loose uh, theme for, for the uh, cover art as well. It was uh, Pekka's idea to have a like a light and darkness and death mm-hmm. and uh, life, like yin, yin and yang kind of stuff of mm-hmm. the album cover. Mm-hmm. So it was a kind of hard thing to pull off, but uh, I think uh, he did all right after all. And uh, uh, 
I sort of like it. Yeah, um, it came out good. It, it has like a Kalevala theme on it, if you know what it is. It's like Finnish uh, poem. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the, or, the um, ornament style is has really, really uh, strong Finnish vibe on it. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a real, real, like tying all three albums together pretty well. Under the Red Cloud, Queen of Time, and um, Halo. They are kind of a, making a tri- trilogy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it like with three albums with the, with the same producer and the same cover artist. And uh, yeah, it's a stronghold. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it 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 fits really well with the album, like you said, with the whole trilogy. And you also have uh, yeah. you also have some pre-orders. So tell us a little bit about those and what you have available, or some of the things you have available along with this album. Wow, um, I'm not actually quite sure about it, but uh, I think there are some bundles with um, uh, CDs and uh, <laughs> and uh, T-shirts or whatever. I'm not following that much yeah i think there was a bunch of yeah there's a bunch of different color vinyls i just know it was very yeah, colorful yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah there was kind of, kind of box set for, mm-hmm. for the album and uh, i don't know we actually have a new record label as well so they might have some kind of campaign going on launching the the uh, label itself as well so <laughs> I think they are doing lots of tricks on that mm. department. <laughs> well, there's a lot of cool stuff over there. And and if all goes well, uh, as we can never tell nowadays, you have quite a few shows planned for this year. So so tell us yeah. if everything goes well, Ali, what you kind of have going on for this year. Well, um, as we know, we are going to North America on April. That's that's the uh, first tour we'll have um, for this album. But after that, we are planning to tour uh, in Europe um, mm-hmm. with festivals, mm-hmm. several festival shows in Finland and uh, Germany and uh, Austria and France and whatever. And uh, then it might be time for uh, a European tour, longer tour in Europe, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not quite sure about it. Uh, but still, it's kind of a, there's this uh, huge cloud of uh, uncertainty right. floating about us. So mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's like imp- impossible to uh, see what will actually happen mm-hmm. in the end of the day. So far. But I st- I, last time we just were touring like hell, we, we uh, went on tour for five, five weeks and stayed on, at home for two two weeks, and uh, then we uh, he had <laughs> had the street again, mm-hmm. uh, touring uh, South America and uh, Russia and uh, Europe several times, uh, North America two times, and uh, so on. So uh, I think we'll be at least two years on tour. Uh, Wow. For for the album mm-hmm. uh, from from April on, so that's what I hope. But uh, mm-hmm. you never know what's going to happen. Well, that would be the most ideal scenario, and we could all hope for that, I guess. And and there you yeah. guys have it. Amorphous have a brand new album out called Halo coming out next month on Atomic Fire Records. And Ali, thank you once again for taking the time to talk with us today, and we wish you and the band a great new year. Thank you. Same here and uh, stay healthy and shine on.